things and uh, drawing the attention of government on issues that border on security. You know, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that we sit every day and watch a country that we inherited from our forebears, you know, uh, uh, drift into the abyss. I make bold to say so because it's, not, it's no longer what it used to be. And if it doesn't bother anybody, it bothers me. I met a country that wasn't like this. And I thought that all we could do was improve on it. But there is so much insecurity in the land. And I keep saying it, that I'm beginning to feel that this level of insecurity is planned. Because if it is not planned, if it is not, if it is not something that is premeditated, then government must react. And react very swiftly. Why do we have people that are unable to take on these challenges that we have head on but are prepared every day to be directly involved in election rigging proscription of all kinds of groups the next day you hear of a, a, a one program that the army is doing in the in the south south in the southeast and all that let me just give you a very simple example. A few years back, the River State House of Assembly passed a law that brought in the neighborhood watch. And what was their duty? Because of these insecurity issues, to help gather, uh, what do we call it, information and intelligence, credible intelligence working directly with the, the relevant agencies, the police, the DSS, and all that. They recruited some people. They were profiled by the DSS and the police. They were to be trained in the NYC permanent orientation camp. As they arrived there, the next thing, because some persons were not comfortable with it, because it was not politically expedient for them. Soldiers came from nowhere and did what they did. But you see Hizba in Kano, you see Amotekum in the southwest. I keep asking, do we have two sets of laws in Nigeria that are applied when it comes to issues of security and all other issues? But let's not even locate it only in River State. Look at Cardinal State. A governor who was on the podium every day insulting the, pres the former president of this country, describing the insecurity as something that was planned by the PDP. Today, is enmeshed in it. You can't go to Cardinal from Abuja. I'm sure very soon they'll close in on him in government house there. He needs to understand. We need to begin to point out the things that are bedeviling us in this country. The last time I was of the opinion that Mr. President should declare a state of emergency in, this, in the security sector. Up until this moment, nothing has been done. I'm sure they are waiting for everybody to die before that will be done. Today is a governor the governor of Benue State, you can imagine the responses, the reactions. And then you find people who call themselves Mietiala. And some groups claiming responsibility for such attacks. It's, 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 these things are things that we never used to hear them in Nigeria. But they're here with us. But why do you think what could be the motivated. You heard it. We've seen videos around. They may be right, they may be wrong, but we hear. You heard heads roll and all sorts of things as at that time. Now, I ask one question. When elections are drawing close, in fact, even this morning, I was watching some programs and we hear some northern elders have the opinion that they want to wipe off an area.
They also said that during the Jonathan administration, we must look at ourselves eyeball to eyeball and tell ourselves where we are going wrong. There is so much division in Nigeria. And that division is caused by this APC administration. Because so much lies have been thrown to the open for people to swallow. You can imagine. Virtually all sensitive offices in this country are held by one set of people. But nobody sees anything wrong with it. You get up one day, you hear that they have kidnapped 300 students. The next day, 200 students. Another time, 100. And there are people who are prepared to be paying them ransom. There are those who are, you know, legally allowed to go and discuss with them. When you continue to do that, you are enabling them to do more. I think that Nigeria should take a deep look at what is happening. If not, very soon, if we allow what is going on to continue to go on, it will be worse than countries like Sudan and the rest of them. God forbid. But I think we are going towards that point. I'm sure you are aware, not long ago, those who deal in foodstuffs stopped allowing trucks to go down south. Both, both sides lost. It's never been like this before. Even the hardship people are going through is enough to even propel any kind of crisis. How much money do you spend to get power? How much do you spend to commute from point A to point B? Even if you don't have a, a car, you must pay more. Because in this country today, we have the petroleum industry that nobody understands what is happening in the petroleum industry. I think that we must remain as one Nigeria, but we must talk to each other and improve on the relationship we have. Because people are getting pained. Look at Benue State. You heard of the Agatu massacre and all other massacres just located within Benue. Look at the effrontery that the so-called Fulani headsmen have. 